everyone. Welcome to our two o'clock presentation on building opportunity for learning through critical reflections, implementing a rubric that supports career critical competencies with Carrie Henry Hullett, Renee Cambiano, and Kathy Siebel. Welcome. Welcome presenters. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Tracy. Hi, everybody. So um, we've got about 20 five minutes to talk about this project that uh, Dr. Cambiano and Dr. Siebold and I have been working on. I'm Carrie Henry Hewlett, and I'm Assistant Professor of Education at Northeastern State, and I work with these ladies in um, teaching in the Instructional Leadership Program, specifically uh, the courses that we're working on this rubric for are those courses that we're using for um, alternative placement teachers. But um, I'll let these ladies introduce themselves as well. And my name is Kathy Siebold. I um, am a professor for uh, curriculum and instruction at NSU. So I teach um, educational psychology as well as a clinical class. And then I teach for ed leadership as um, overflow and really enjoy the work that we're doing with this project. Hi, everyone. I'm Renee Cambiano. Um, I, as Dr. Henry Hewlett said, I teach in the uh, Instructional Leadership Graduate Program, as well as the MS in Leadership Program, um, both, both of which are 100% online. So what we're going to talk about today is um, the idea of critical reflection and how important it is in our field as teacher educators, but I know in a lot of fields, we know that adults learn through reflection. And so career critical competencies can be met in many different areas. So we'll go on to our first slide. And Dr. Cambiano, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Awesome, what a beautiful day to be talking about reflection. Um, Looking out at this beautiful campus and all the green trees gives me an opportunity to uh, talk about how meaningful reflection is. In uh, as a practitioner, if you are a, an educator or a leader in an organization or wherever you are, why is reflection so important? Well, I can tell you, I you know I've been at Northeastern. Uh, quite some time and reflection has been something that is extremely important to, to instruction. Why and students ask, why do you want us to reflect? What what at, what does it give us? Well, it gives us the opportunity to think deeply about our practice, whatever it is. And it doesn't have to be just internally. It could be reflecting on your practice with others. And I am so fortunate to have it, to be part of a team that allows me to uh, have that deep reflection, pushes me to an uncomfortable point and moves me beyond that in a safe, supportive environment. But without that first initial reflection, that wouldn't happen. Um, so why, you say, why, why is reflection important? It helps us grow as instructors, but more importantly, our students grow to the practitioners that we want them, you know, that they want to be, not what we want, what they want to be. Uh, that's why reflection is so important. So in our program, we knew this, we knew we wanted reflection, but I don't know about you guys. Um, Dr. Siebold and I presented last month at another conference and we were discussing reflection and it, it was not surprising to me when we said, how do you assess it? So much of our audience was like, it's, it's almost impossible. I hate trying to assess it. How am I going to assess what someone else thinks? And that's where we were as a team in this process, we were like, we know we need them to critically reflect. We know we want depth of thinking, but how do we get there? And one of the things that we know about 
when we teach online, it's super important to me that when we build an online course, we're building an we're building with intention. And so we wanted to not only assess them, we wanted to think about, okay, how do we grow them in this practice? Because as a general rule, even at the graduate level, students don't always come into us being critically reflective. They want to still stay on that surface. And we were wanting them to get down there to that place where they're really learning. And we know that when we use rubrics in the online classroom, we can actually use them not just to assess what the students do, you know, okay, how well did you do that? But if we do it right, it can also teach the students as they are learn as they are practicing. So what we do is we always say, look at the rubric before you submit. And I'm sure a lot of you are doing that as well. Look at the rubric, make sure that, that you're meeting these goals. So that's where we realized, okay, A, we, we know reflection's important. B, we know that by using a rubric, we could assess them while also scaffolding the learning. So then it became, okay, but when we look at reflection, there are so many different versions of reflection. I mean, there are all these different definitions, all these ways of looking at it. So we started thinking about uh, teachers and the different uh, areas that they need to think about and the different lenses, because we know as teachers, um, we have a lot going on there, you know, other faculty members, other students, peers, parents, all of these things happening in a school environment. And so when you are reflecting on your practice, and this is specifically, uh, we started talking about those teachers who are already in the field uh, that are teaching right now and need to continue to improve their practice and how we could use reflection for that specifically. Because it's one, one thing to reflect on, um, you know, the, the material that you've read in a class and, and in this kind of environment uh, that is uh, kind of structured without all of these um, outside influences. But then you get into the classroom as a new teacher and you need to continue that growth, but it becomes harder because there are so many complex things happening and there are so many factors for someone to consider. So we started doing some research. We actually had a reflection piece already in our work. And what we found, like Carrie said, was it was really shallow, but we could see little snippets of a greatness here and there. Like someone would say, I'm reflecting on this and I'm going to change my practice in this way. But it was really random and, and, and it wasn't consistent across the board. And so what really started on us on this journey is to think about how do we move students in reflection from simply saying this is what I did to this is what I did and this is how useful it was. Oh, and by the way, this is what I did. It didn't work out so well. This is what I'm going to change. We need students to get to change in reflection. Not enough to just recognize what I've done. If I don't change it going forward, then how valuable is the reflection? It's all about the changing and where you're going. And so we started doing research on, you know, what are the lenses that a team change that I'm going to be making? And we came across uh, Brookfield's four lenses and we just loved it. Fell in love with the fact that um, it takes into consideration um, the voices that are happening in, in the classroom. So um, one, myself. How did I feel about that? Uh, how effective did I feel it was when I used this strategy or that strategy? I have to look at that. I have to examine my own performance, so to speak, in, in all of this. But yet I also have to look um, toward the students. The students have a stake in this as well. Um, and I may feel like 
I knocked it out of the park <laughs> with the strategy that I'm using. But yet the students may not feel the same way. And if I'm not looking at what I'm doing from their lens as well, then I might make some improvements, but they might not be the right ones. Um, and then also peers, other peers in, in the room. We know from Vygotsky, Bronfin Brenner, from Bandura, all of these, and, and from uh, adult learning theory that um, we learn from one another best. You know, uh, learning in a, a university classroom usually involves us talking to each other and learning from one another. And so without, you know, going to someone else and, you know, getting their critical feedback as well and reflecting on their perspectives, again, I might make some change, but it might not be the most effective change. And then finally, of course, all of this is grounded in theory. All of this is grounded in um, what we know is best practice. And so once we hit on Brookfield's four lenses, we knew we were on the track to helping students understand from what lens do I need to be thinking about my reflection. Yeah, I was just going to add to that, um, Kathy, that I, I think that one of the things that we were noticing is students seem to only see that reflecting from a self perspective. So that was why it was all being, you know, really coming shallow in there. Well, you know, I'm just looking at my life experience, how I feel and, you know, and not really diving deep into critical reflection. Um, you know, so what kind of thing, you know, they were just, this is how I feel. And that's, that's the, va the validity of it. So, so the first thing we did is we introduced Brookfield's four lenses to our students. We put materials into the class and, and began to uh, teach them about it. So once we decided on that, we needed a way to assess it. And like we said before, we knew that on, in online learning, we could use a rubric and the first rubrics that we were using were, again, not really getting at that depth that we were looking for. Um, so we began to kind of break it down. Can you see the rubric? Did it, is it up there? I was it also going to add to the conversation that we were having about the self learners, peers, and scholarship, there was a lot of dialogue on what role does scholarship have in this reflection? Um, because learners, our students have a tendency to push back on APA and scholarship. Why is it, I'm, I'm an educator. Why do I need to know all this stuff? And one of the things about Brookfield's uh, reflective practitioner model is that it's deep in uh, the theoretical lens, which provides our learners opportunity to ju create justification. The literature, it's not my opinion. It, you know, when they talk to principals and other teachers about their practice that they're learning in this program, they can ground it in theory, which is real, is critical to the success, to their success as a uh, reflective practitioner, as an educator. So, so we we sat down and said, how do we measure this? Because we go back to that idea that it is really hard to measure somebody's thoughts. Um, but once we put this framework together, you can see we put four criteria together. We, we look at self, we look at learners through the learner's eyes, the peer and scholarship. And then we started talking about, so how will we measure their depth of thinking and a natural progression was, okay, well, how, how does Bloom's measure depth of thinking, right? And so we said, okay, well, if they were at the lowest level of Bloom's, when they begin to reflect, or when we, when we look at their reflection, what might we see? We might see that they just describe things. They're just telling what they do, but they're not really looking at it for, from any depth. So we, we ended up creating this as a remembering and understanding is the lowest level, then analyze, evaluate, and finally creating something new, right? And so for each step, you can kind of see it stair-stepped. And we did that intentionally 
for the students to be able to learn from it in the online environment, to be able to look at it and notice, okay, so if you're creating, you are doing all four of these steps. Go ahead, Dr. Cambiano, I can see your, I, I was. No, I was just, in, I, you know, every time I look at this, I'm like, gosh, it has been such a long journey uh, to get to this place of assessing such a critical competency that we believe our educators should have. And to see it in front of me, I'm, I was just having that moment again. <laughs> so for each one, we also have some criteria for um, you know, just the, the kind of housekeeping, I call it, in their reflection. Um, we didn't include them here today, but like um, how well are they uh, paying attention to their scholarship as far as their writing and, and that sort of thing. Although we don't count those at, at as high of a level because we believe that we really are focusing this rubric on how deeply are they thinking. So for each one of those lenses, we're asking them to think to the highest level. And I can say we just implemented this at the the last eight week session. So I've only had one section come through, but already I'm seeing more depth in their critical reflection. They're, look, they're looking at this, they're, they're seeing, oh, well, I'm not doing any evaluation. You know, I'm kind of trying to analyze how I've learned, but I'm not evaluating that or, or, or understanding how that might um, be a strength for me, or I might still have challenges and that sort of thing. Go ahead. I, I feel like I'm cutting you two off. I apologize. <laughs> no, I think um, it took a while to get to um, how we have this stair stepped up to create because so many rubrics are meets, you know, doesn't do anything, meets, you know, is satisfactory or is outstanding. And when we were thinking about, you know, I, I, when I have all of my classes, I am looking for them to get to a higher order thinking. And so we had to just kind of like throw everything out and say, okay, we're, we're going to try to think of a different way to do this and not just say, yes, you meet this standard, because that's what makes this tool instructive for them. It This is not just, we are not using it just as a rubric, but it's an instruction tool that someone can take away um, with them to remind themselves of how you move along that progression. And just like in learning in your classroom as a teacher, you know kids have to first understand something before they can run to create something with, with that new knowledge. It's the same for teachers. We know that it takes teachers three to five years to get really comfortable um, in, and, and during that time, they're looking back on the work. What we hope that this does is it speeds that up. Like, um, how can we get faster and better at evaluating what we're doing so that we can change and improve in performance. And so now um, we, as Carrie said, we're actually implementing this into our own class as a teaching tool. So it, it come, becomes both. So at the very beginning of the class, we teach them um, Brookfields. We, we have them look at Brookfields. We talk about the importance of these lenses and then talk about how, how do you progress? And then how do you use this as something that I can use every day in my practice? When we go through college and we have these rubrics, it's often very tailored just to a specific class. This is something that we want our teachers to take into their own classrooms and to continue to use it as a tool uh, for them to reflect on their work on a daily basis and to make improvements. So that, that to me is what makes this very different and very exciting for the future. I think the one thing that has been a little difficult for my students so far, and, and we'll of course keep tweaking that instruction, keep you know changing our, our practice, but I've noticed that they wanna say, well, but I can't, I don't know what my learners are thinking or, 
or like for some of my students, well, I'm not in the classroom right now. So how would I know if this list lesson plan might be effective or, you know, I can't look at it through the learner's eyes. So getting them to understand that part of this is putting themselves in another shoes, seeing, literally seeing through another lens, not necessarily when they're told, you know, all of them have been students. And I remind them that you've been a student. How would you feel if this was in your classroom? What would your responses be? How would that you know, how would you react to it? So helping them be a little bit broader in their critical thinking, because we were getting too broad, and now we've given them this um, structure, and now they're getting too narrow. So I'm having to back them back out a little bit. So that's kind of another challenge that we're hoping that the rubric can help us to, to meet as well. Not only that, I think also to overcome this fear of feedback. Um, you know, I work with my students on this a lot. This we're hoping will normalize feedback. Like, how do I know what's in the student's head? I ask them and I don't wait until the very end of class when it's too late for me to change. I need to make change quicker. I need to improve faster. And so if you have these natural feedback loops and you're saying it's okay uh, to get feedback and it's not always going to be good. I mean, I, every time it's evaluation season, I'm like, ah, you know, and everybody feels that way, but let's normalize that a little bit. I mean, we teach, we teach our students growth mindset on purpose so that they start to normalize feedback as a thing that is a it's it's an opportunity for growth. It's not a scary somebody doesn't like me, I did everything wrong kind of situation. And we don't want our students to feel that way because teaching is just not that way. If you are not improving, then you're stagnated and your students aren't getting what they need. And so this for me as a tool for growth mindset. How can we get students to constantly think, I need to be looking at all of these lenses and however I can get some feedback is what I'm gonna implement in my classroom to do it. Well, Kathy, that's also a great like, oh, go ahead. Oh, just, a, just one little comment there, because what we've been talking about is this being embedded in a course. The hopes and dreams that we have is that it's embedded throughout the entire program and that we can see the growth from the first course that they take to the capstone thesis class. And then it is also like Kathy and Carrie have said, it's modeling some critical thinking skills that they bring then bring into their own instruction. Um, and so that it's truly what we're teaching about action research, that it's spiraling effect, right? That it's, it's gathering information, like Kathy said, from students from your peers and being a better practitioner. The other thing is, I think we believe as a team that this is not just about being a reflective educator. It can be used in any environment with just a tweak or two in, in the language. And uh, hopefully we will be embedding this in the MS in leadership where we have uh, nonprofit leaders, higher ed leaders, training and development. I mean, it's just the whole gamut uh, beyond uh, common ed. Yeah. So well going said. back to Kathy's talking about feedback, Kathy, that's a great segue into our next slide that you were going to share. Yeah, so we put together a Padlet page because we're in a stage right now where we need feedback. We have... We've put this out there. We're starting to get some feedback from our own students about the rubric and, and how they feel about it. We did present at another conference and we asked those conference goers if they would please look at the rubric and, and give us some feedback. Give us some, you know, if you see things that, that don't make sense or, you know, you have questions about, you know, why we're doing, you know, this, this way. So we're, we want to know that because we want this to be, a useful tool. We want to perfect it over time. And so we're starting to down that process where we'll have uh, faculty members at our own university, as well as some faculty members outside of our university to go ahead and look at this. So we would love the opportunity um, to get your feedback on this. So 
I put in the chat, and I also have a, a QR code there, but I just uh, put in the chat also a link to the Padlet. So Carrie, could you get to the Padlet? And I also linked that. Um, oh, you want me to code. like actually bring it up? Yeah. Okay, I'll try. Oh, it worked, I think. Um, hang on, I have to make it fit. That it? Yep. Okay. So I have linked the actual uh, rubric there, and we just want you to think about it. You don't have to answer all three of these questions, you know, all four of these questions, but we would really love, you know, your feedback. What are your initial thoughts? Just maybe the structure of it or, you know, anything else that you just observe about the rubric. And then, you know, what questions does it leave you with? What questions might you know, our students who are, are starting to use this tool or someone else looking at it, what questions might they have? Where does it make sense? Where, where does it not make sense? And then, you know, just some epiphanies. Um, just give us some sort of feedback. Let us know what needs to be changed. And um, we're, we're all about, you know, really, we're, we're trying so hard to model that growth mindset to our students with this tool that we have, we too <laughs> need to be um, comfortable with feedback. So if there's something in there, just tell us like it is. Um, so uh, we would love it. We're going to uh, leave this Padlet up. So if you could, you know, copy the link, and I think you have access to the the slides afterward. If you go out later when you have some time and just give us some feedback, we would really appreciate it. I see we already have a little feedback. Thank you to whoever's uh, sharing. Um, it really is appreciated. So we are at 25 minutes. I know that Tracy said we could have a couple more minutes. So um, any questions, comments, thoughts you'd like to share before we uh, close out? I saved the link. I'm going to look at it later. I need to process a little bit. It's a lot of information. It's amazing. Thank yeah, you. In 20 minutes, I was a little worried about how quickly we were going to be able to do that. Yeah, that's so, yeah, take all the time you want. We'll, we'll leave it out there and yeah, just um, we would appreciate it. And we appreciate you so much coming and, and listening every time that that we present it. I think it gets a little more firm in my own mind and it helps me. Um, I will definitely go back and reflect on um, what we've talked about today. Well, if nobody has any other questions, um, I guess we're, we can call that good. Thank you all for coming. It was so, such a pleasure to share this with you. Thank you so much. It was a great presentation. Thank you. Thank Thanks. You Have a great Thank day. You.